you're probably wondering, what on earth am I doing? This is probably one of the many reasons my neighbors don't want to talk to me. This may look like a great way to let up some pent up anger, but I swear there's a good reason as to why this wooden pallet is getting a good taste of my boot. Today I'm going to show you guys how I turned this into this. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, then hello! What on earth am I up to now? Well, I'm going to be showing you guys how I made this sweet little tortoise habitat for my little Egyptian tortoise here, Eden. Cost of everything is starting to go way up, and uh, wood is a uh, little bit more pricey than it used to be. I know that there's probably a few raised eyebrows here, but I swear you're just gonna have to trust the process on this one, guys. But we're gonna keep things short and sweet for today's intro and get right into how I turned old skid wood into a suitable habitat for my little Egyptian tortoise, Eden. If you like this video, then be sure to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button if you want to see updates and videos like this on my pets in the future. So, the wooden pallets I got were from work, where we will sometimes get brand new wooden skids along with our stock shipments. I was going to buy wood from the hardware store, but a lot of people were telling me how the price of wood had gone up significantly during the pandemic. I thought how the wood was really nice and looked fairly new and said, hey, if someone really wanted to, they could totally use this wood for a project. Skid wood can be made from all kinds of wood, including woods like pine and cedar, which are usually not the best for most animals, especially in the form of shavings. But even if your skid wood does contain pine and cedar, it can still be safe for building this habitat, because we will be sealing it with quite a few layers of wooden sealant to keep in any potential harmful oils and resins. There's also a pond liner that will be going in as well, acting as another safety barrier. Just be mindful of where you're getting your wood from for you and your pet's safety. If you're not entirely sure, it's probably best to just go buy some from the store anyway. So first thing we have to do is dismantle the wooden pallet. But this is the hardest part of the whole project. If you're really strong like my friend here, you can probably just pull the wooden pieces off. We're gonna go! Come on, Hulk! Yes! Sweet! If you're tiny like me, you could throw your whole body into it. But if you want to keep it more civil, you could also just use some tools like I am here. Here I have a crowbar and I'm just tapping it with a hammer to make the nails loose. This was arguably a lot more fun to do though. Once you're done taking all the wood pieces off, give yourself a little break, and then the last stubborn job to do is just removing the nails like so. Again, you can avoid all this if you want to just buy some wood instead, but I like to be a little resourceful and save my money where I can. So now we have all of our wooden pieces and I'm picking up the nicest pieces to use. Then I'm measuring everything to size and my mom here is helping me cut it with an electric saw. The table is going to be measuring 42 inches long by 20 inches wide by 8 inches tall. Now I'm laying out the pieces how I'm going to want them. This is going to be the bottom here and the sides I put together like this so that it's keeping everything together. Now we're going outside for a little more room to start putting everything together. With some wood nails, we're just hammering two nails into each baseboard and the sides to keep things together and continuing with that with each baseboard. Now it's finally starting to come together and the last bit of assembling we're gonna have to do is just putting on the rest of the sides. We experimented a little because the wooden nails we had weren't the best quality and instead of running back out we just decided to use a drill and some screws to do the rest of the job. Now time to clean it up a bit more before we make it look pretty. 
I'm just going in with some sandpaper that I'm gonna use by hand first for the tight nooks and crannies, and also the kind that I can use with a drill to do majority of the work. Now this I'm super excited about. We're going to stain the wood. I was telling a friend how I was doing this project for my tortoise and was ready to stain the habitat. He told me to hold on because he thinks that he actually might have something at home for me to use. It was an oak colored stain, but unfortunately it was oil based, so that unfortunately is not safe to use for animals. But he also had a water based one that was red. It was so perfect. Look at this color guys. Oh my god. I know some people are going to grill me for not putting this stain on properly. I know you're supposed to rub it into the wood, which my mother informed me about while I was halfway through the project. But you know, it ended up going on okay like this. If you've got better craftsmanship skills than I do, use them. It ended up getting really dark really quick while I was doing this, but I was very determined to get it finished that night. Lastly, you'll want to finish it off and seal it with a water-based varathane or polyurethane. Here, I'm using this diamond wood finish. Once again, you want something that's water-based and not oil, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a few coats on this bad boy. Last but not least, we're putting in the pond liner, and you can see here my mom's tug is trying to help. Hi, Kona. Please don't snaggle too. I know. Both of them I had someone drop off this pond liner for me at work to use for this project, so thank you so much to that person for that. It's way more than I needed, but hey, it was free. So I'm gonna put this on like so, almost as if you were making a backwards fawning cake. But we're going to lay the pond liner over the wooden habitat, start smoothing it out into the nooks and crannies, and then trim the access off. With a staple gun, we're then gonna staple it all into place. The corners are the trickiest. I found cutting the corner right down the middle and then folding it nicely and then stapling it into place worked rather well. Any staples that are poking out, I just flattened with a hammer quickly. To make the edge look a little nicer, I took a strip of black Gorilla Tape and decided to line the edge of the pond liner up top to give it a cleaner look and to finish sealing off the whole thing. With some extra wood I had, I made a little upper ledge area to go into the habitat that I then later put some railings on using those wooden ladder hides for small mammals and just quickly tacked those into place with a few nails. And honestly guys, that's it. There we have it. This is basically the finished product. This was a bit of a laborious project to do, but it was actually really fun to make. It costed me basically zero dollars. And in my video that I released last week, you guys saw me set up this habitat for my Egyptian tortoise. And it seems that little Eden here is liking their new home. Hopefully I was able to give you guys some ideas on how to make a sweet new crib for your tortoise or for anybody that's looking into getting one. Thank you guys again all so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Stay weird everyone. There was this girl that I used to work with who used to call me a skid all the time and I was really confused. I was like, are you calling me a wooden pallet? I was then introduced to Letter Kenny. So, in the wise words of Dwayne, pitter patter, let's get at her. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button if you want to see updates on the.